Gates of honor this morning. The Chairman of the Permanent Secretary for the Commonwealth Province. We can remain standing for the Zambia National Anthem. White, Madam Kirsten, to just open a celebrated prayer. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for your mercies and graces. That it can't be impossible, O oh God, our Father, to meet in this manner. Thank you, Father, for what you continue doing in our lives. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity of God to give us this special machine of God that we are going to use to improve the lives of our communities in this country. Merciful Father, thank you to the donors of God that have been so generous to us and the continue of God working with us. Merciful Father, grant all of us here that, O oh God, our Father, as we continue serving the people of this country, we shall serve them with love and compassion. Merciful Father, we just want to dedicate this special occasion into your hands. Holy Spirit, be with us as we say, Amen. 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 
Thank you so much. You may kindly take our seats. Allow me to recognize the presence of the Commonwealth Province Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mr. Daniel Kamenga, present here with us this morning. Allow me to recognize the presence of the board chair for the Trop Tropical Disease Research Centre, TDRC, Professor Lloyd Molenga. Allow me to recognize the Commonwealth Provincial Health Director, Dr. Charles Menonan, present. Allow me to recognize the USAID Sound Division Director, present with us this morning, Mr. Peter Wibler. Allow me to recognize the CIDES Chief of Party, Dr. Zico Lunga. Allow me to also recognize the CIDES Acting Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Akin Sinkala. Allow me to also recognize the Director for the Tropical Disease Research Center, Dr. Keshom Chongwe. Allow me to recognize also, present here with us, the Senior Medical Superintendent for Ndola Teaching Hospital, and also the Senior Medical Superintendent for Arthur Davidson Children's Hospital. Medical Superintendents present, if any, District Health Directors present, staff from the Provincial Health Office, Sinus, USAID, TDRC, Dollar Teaching Hospital, and other invited guests present here with us this morning. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again, and welcome to the official handover ceremony of an automated library preparation machine to the tropical disease research center, TDRC, valued guest of honor at 2,759,400, oh, courtesy of the USAID Fiblon project implemented by CIDES. Guest of honor, this state of the art equipment that we handed over this morning, we will enhance access to genomic sequence surveillance for COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, as we kick off this morning's event, allow me to invite the Masala Country Executive just to give us a few pieces of entertainment. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
A big round of applause from a Telecarter objective. Thank you so much. We continue the program this morning. At this point in time, allow me to invite the TDRC director, Dr. Kesem Tongwe, to give his welcome remarks. The Deputy Secretary, uh, the Provincial Director, Dr. Charles Minuna, the Board Chair for TDRC, uh, other board members present, uh, SMS from Dollar Teaching Hospital, SMS for uh, Arthur Davidson Teaching Hospital, uh, the USA uh, Mission Director, Mr. Peter Wibler. Uh, a representative from uh, the chief executive of Ciders, uh, the chief of party with CID Tibilon project, all senior government officials from ZNBHI, MOH, and TDRC, distinguished invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to all the distinguished guests. Today, we gather Today we gather here to celebrate a significant milestone in our ongoing pursuit of excellence in health research. It is an honor to have all of you here and to address you on this occasion. Uh, when we are receiving a uh, a valuable piece of genomic sequencing equipment for TDRC. First and foremost, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to each one of you for gracing this occasion and with your presence. Your support and collaboration has been instrumental in propelling the TDRC forward in our mission to combat infectious diseases. At TDRC, we recognize the ever-evolving landscape of health challenges that our society faces. So in this era of rapid advancements, one crucial tool that has emerged as a game changer in disease control and management is genomic sequencing. This powerful technology has revolutionized our understanding of infectious diseases, enabling us to identify new strains and track their spread and develop targeted interventions. So as we gather today to witness the handover of the, this state-of-the-art equipment, uh, we recognize the uh, remarkable addition to our research capabilities that this equipment will bring, and uh, because it will enhance uh, our ability to quickly and accurately analyze genetic information, um, unraveling complexities of diseases, the diseases that we deal with uh, on a daily basis. Uh, by uh, harnessing the power of genomics, we can identify drug resistance patterns, improve treatment strategies, and ultimately save lives. The integration of this technology would not have been possible without the unwavering support from our value partners and our donors. 
We extend our deepest appreciation to all the organizations such as the USAID, the CDC, the Global Fund, ZNBHI, and of course our Malay Ministry, the Minister of Health, who have stood by us sharing our vision of a healthier and disease-free future. As we embark on this new chapter of disease management and control, I'm filled with optimism for the transformative impact that this uh, equipment will have on our research and the lives of those we serve. The genomic sequencing equipment that we are receiving today is not only merely a symbol of progress, but a beacon of hope for the countless individuals affected by infectious diseases. On behalf of TDRC, I want to assure you that we are committed to maximizing the potential of this cutting edge technology, not only through research collaboration, but also by actively striving to improve patient care and outcomes and contribute to the overall disease surveillance efforts. We will extensively collaborate with our partners, both from the research side and the clinical side, exchanging knowledge and driving innovation to unlock its full potential. Together, we will continue to push boundaries and pursue breakthroughs that will shape the landscape of global healthcare for the better. Once again, I extend my warmest welcome to all, all of you. I thank you for the support and the belief that you have in our work. Uh, we, I ask that we join hands as we embark on a journey towards the future, uh, combating infectious diseases and uh, trying to eliminate them for the good of our people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Those were remarks by the CDRC director, Dr. Kesson Tonga. At this point in time, allow me to invite the USAID Zambia Mission Director, Mr. Peter Webner, to make his remarks. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Peter Wiebler. I'm the, the USA Commission Director of the Zambia. It's a very uh, great honor and pleasure to, to be here with you this morning. Uh, let me recognize the, the Deputy Provincial uh, Secretary for the province, as well as all of the uh, other officials in our post uh, who have already been established in the protocols for this morning's event. So let me write on the, the protocols that have already been uh, established. Um, today's a special day, and I'm not going to uh, speak for uh, a long time. I do want to say a few words and make a couple of observations on why we think that USAID today is so important and so special. Um, so first and foremost, uh, today is a day that marks uh, another step forward in the partnership that the United States government and the American people have with the Zambian government and with the Zambian people. Specifically, it's another, uh, as, as the, our host, the TDRC director was just saying, it's a step forward in terms of technology uh, and, and uh, strengthening the capabilities of TDRC and the Angola Teaching Hospital to uh, confront some of the most urgent and pressing public health challenges in terms of infectious diseases uh, that Zambia is facing. So I think uh, for us at USAID, uh, the symbolism of this moment, the importance of today, is not only about uh, transitioning and operationalizing the genome sequencer that we're going to see a little bit later. It's about marking the partnership and the, the investments that all of the parties are making to strengthen Zambia's developing future. So the United States people through USAID are making investments in Zambia's future. But also Zambia, is making investments in Zambia's future through providing the facilities for the genome sequencer by providing the expertise and the staff and the talent uh, to manage, maintain, and operate uh, this equipment very, very effectively so that it can ultimately serve its purpose, which is, uh, as the director was saying, to save lives. So we look at this not as a donation or as a gift, as I was telling the deputy PS earlier uh, today, but we look at this as an investment in Zambia's future, and we hope and expect 
that that investment will be matched by continued investments on the same side as well. The second point I wanted to make uh, is that we're is about the importance of the uh, equipment and of the, um, the the USAID investments themselves. We have all in the world, in America, in Zambia, other parts of, of the world, we've all just come out of a dangerous pandemic. Um, we we have seen and witnessed uh, firsthand the impact that pandemics and public health threats can have on development uh, gains and development progress. We've seen here in Zambia jobs that have been lost. We've seen key health indicators that have declined. We have seen uh, the young people's education be slowed because of the effects of the pandemic. So machines and equipment like we're turning over today to our friends and partners at GDRC can help to address and mitigate those public health challenges in the future and to build the global health security architecture here in Zambia that can prevent and mitigate future public health challenges, but also not just here in Zambia, but also across the world. So when we ask ourselves, what are we doing to strengthen Zambia and the world against future pandemics so that what we've just come out of in 2020 to 2022 doesn't happen again or happens in a much, much more limited fashion, today is an example of concrete action that the United States government and the uh, government of the Republic of Zambia are taking uh, to, to help protect, mitigate against such threats in the future. That's an important step. So. I think we all should take some pride that we are actually not just recognizing the importance of combating infectious diseases and in strengthening those defenses, but we're actually taking action and investing uh, in the future so that future pandemics, future health challenges can be reduced in minimums. I want to thank you all. And again, thanks to our partners uh, here in the government and to our hosts. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see the, the sequencer a little bit later. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for those remarks. That was the U.S. Senate Zambia Mission Director. At this point in time, once again, allow me to invite Dr. Chongo, who in turn invites the TDRC Board Chairperson to make his remarks. Thank you. So it's now my honor and privilege to invite a board chairperson for the Tropical Diseases Research Center, Professor Lloyd Mulling. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And um, good morning, all. Permanent Deputy Permanent Secretary, we are grateful that you could host us here at this lovely hospital. And also allow me to just say thank you to um, the chief um, person here who has really contributed a lot to making this possible, representing USID. Mr. Webler, we are really, really thank you. Thank you for the effort that you really put in personally. And even just a uh, note on this one, but also many, many other aspects supporting the health system. So we are grateful to you and also to your SID. We are grateful, PhD, for the leadership that you continue exhibiting to us. And we really see Copper Belt as a very kind of province. And as I speak, I'm delighted on behalf of TGRC as the board chair to say that we are being hosted by a very good PhD. And they're also being hosted by a very good SMS. Dr. Banda, thank you. Uh, we look forward to the continued collaboration as TDRC. And I'm sure we have very good relationships with our director here, Dr. Chongwe. We believe that the two of you can lead to TDRC becoming one of the best institutions, not only in the region, but also globally. For the directors who are present from uh, the board, the four of them I can see, uh, thank you for attending this session. And also thank you to TDR, to ZMBHI, Dr. Mzonda, for coming through the various uh, uh, senior government officials. We are grateful for you being available here. And also CIDAS, who have supported the health response really in many, many aspects. We are glad that 
USAID through CIDAS, you are able to make this donation or this investment a reality. So we look forward again to more collaborations from different information partners and as TDRC, we are grateful for this. Now, TDRC is a very kind of institution in the country. It has stood there when we have needed TDRC from the Minister of Health. When the COVID uh, pandemic started, we looked at other laboratories in the country which could help really in making sure that we uh, responded well to some of the public health threats and this instance of COVID. And TDRC came on board, became a leader in the northern region. And I'm glad that now we are witnessing a time when we have now a next sequence generation uh, a sequencer which is available and which is making really a difference in the lives of our people. I'm told, Deputy Permanent Secretary, that this equipment is able to detect different strains of the COVID 19. I'm told it's able to detect also different resistance patterns for TB in just under two weeks. Traditionally, this takes longer, longer periods. I'm told it's able to detect also different strains of HIV as well. It's able to detect different strains of various bacterial pathogens. So it's one of the, I think we are talking of only three similar equipments in the country. And this investment is something that we do appreciate as TDRC. But also, allow me to say that this should now put TDRC at another higher level in terms of research beyond the service delivery. These pathogens which are able to isolate from this uh, new sequencing machine should be able to inform the countries around us, the people within the country, and also the world on what is happening. We value the fact that TDRC has placed the importance on public health security, and that's the reason we have ZNP HIV available. And we've been emphasizing on having these platforms which can detect diseases, not just one disease entity, but for different diseases. And this speaks really to the aspiration of TDRC and also the aspiration of uh, the ministry as well. We look forward to a time when now TDRC can replicate similar services in other areas as well, so that not only the Copper Belt should benefit, but also other regions should benefit from really such equipment and also such investment. So we are grateful to TDRC for the initiative, for the initial process of trying to request for this equipment and also for USID for responding appropriately and the Minister of Health through the local leadership in the province uh, uh, for really making sure that we are supported through this space. Let me not uh, speak more, or I can now end up with this say that we are really observing as a board on how this is going to affect many, many lives. Dr. Zico told me a few uh, minutes ago that already, just in these two weeks, we have been able to detect different strains of TB. And those are people who are suffering from TB for a long time and they're being treated with drugs which are not responding. But now, thanks to your investment, we're able to see that those people will now find the right drugs for them. We hope that this is going now to go further into other cities as well in finding the right medicines for them so that they can respond well. Thank you so much, and I wish everyone here present a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those were remarks from the TDRC board chair, Professor Lloyd Malenka. At this point in time, allow me to invite the provincial health director, Dr. Charles Mwenna, who will in turn to invite our guest of honor to make his uh, keynote remarks. Thank you so much. Um, this morning, when Piers is young, called that he will not manage to come. I knew that uh, our local PS also was not around, so I quickly discussed with the, our deputy permanent secretary, who also I, I knew that he had some engagement in Chingola this morning. 
but we are happy sir, that he, you made a quick decision you know, at short notice to, to be with us because you were supposed to be in the field in Chitizabongo and Chingol. So we are thankful so much for coming. And now it's my honor and privilege to call upon you, sir, to, to speak to us, our DPPS. Uh, good morning, colleagues. The Provincial Health Director, Dr. Menuna Charles. The Zerene, PH Director General, Professor Roma Chilengi. The TDRC Board Chairperson, Professor Lloyd Mlenga. The TDRC Director, Dr. Chongwe Keshon. The US Aid Zambia Mission Director, Mr. Peter. The Chief Executive Officer, Cyrus. The Senior Medical Superintendent, Nola Teaching Hospital, uh, Dr. Banda. The Senior Medical Superintendent, Arthur Davidson. Hospital, uh, Madam Ando. Let me also, we are privileged to, in our midst, to have the wife to the provincial uh, minister, Honorable Elisha Matambo, Mrs. Matambo. Let me recognize you in your capacity as a wife to the Honorable Minister. The Chief of Party said, um, TB Loan Project, Dr. Lunga, Zico, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, the media, you are recognized. Thank you for covering us. I want to send an apology on behalf of the permanent secretary for the Minister of Health, Dr. George Sinyangwe, who was supposed to be the guest of honor today, but uh, he received an assignment in the earliest hours of this morning, and therefore he could not travel from Lusaka to come and be with us. I hope you are going to uh, forgive him. Because of the sensitivity and the importance of this program, we were engaged at provincial administration for the Copper Belt province. Our permanent secretary is also not with us, is in Osaka, attending the Smart Zambia trainings. I was also supposed to be in the, uh, in the field. We are doing the headcount for the civil servants. I was supposed to be in Chengwala. But when this assignment came, I turned down my assignment and I decided to come and be uh, here with you. So this is how important this event is to our colleagues from the user head. We treasure and we consider your donation as important to us as the government. Nevertheless, the PS sent uh, the, the speech and I'm going to deliver this speech on his behalf. This is not my speech, but the speech from the Yes, the permanent secretary means a wealthy doctor, George Sinangwe, and allow me to deliver the speech on his behalf. I stand before you filled with uh, honor and delight as we gather to witness a historical moment in the field of public health. The official handoff of Solomon for the geno gen genomic sequence equipment to the Zambian Ministry of Health. This occasion is a testimony to the unwavering commitment of our government to provide quality health uh, services for the all Zambians. 
from the very first day, we were struck with the COVID-19 pandemic. Our government has demonstrated the collaborative approach in our fight against this uh, disease. We have embraced the goodwill and support of all our collaborating partners, recognizing that only through unity that we can overcome the challenges we are facing today. You agree with me that uh, COVID has come to stay. It's like the disease that has been coming every time we experience the cold season. Some few weeks ago, we received some reports in some areas that uh, we are still having challenges of the COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, the strides we have made so far in controlling and managing the, the COVID-19 is a result of collective efforts through the Ministry of Health and the support we are receiving through uh, the stakeholders who have dedicated themselves to this noble cause. I must express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to the American people uh, through the United States uh, Agents for International Development to set a crucial partner in our battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Through their partnership with the Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia and the Tuberculosis Local Organization Project, the USAID has supported the means of wealthy in implementing numerous COVID-19 related activities for over $4.9 million. The United States of, United States of America, through the USAID, they have invested in, I emphasize, the 4.9 million US dollars in supporting us to fight this pandemic. This substantial contribution has significantly impacted our ability to combat the virus effectively and providing essential health services to our people. Today, we receive the automated library preparation machine, a crucial tool in modern genomic research and sequencing workflows. This machine automates and streamlines the process of preparing DNA or RNA libraries, which are vital for the next generation sequencing technologies. It is introduction into our health infrastructure, which will bring forth numerous benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, this machine will enhance efficiency and speed, enabling our researchers to process more than more samples in a short time frame. It will also contribute to greater accuracy and precisely in our case, ensuring that reliable, trustworthy results are obtained. Moreover, conserving samples and reagents will lead to significant cost saving, enabling us to utilize our resources more effectively. This is what it means that uh, where we are traveling distances to go and our samples tested in Rusaka and somewhere else, this money will be channeled to the procurement of other drugs and uh, other equipment. So saving on our part, and we appreciate the American government and the American people through the user aid. In essence, this machine will revolutionize our genomic research capabilities its contributions to efficiency, accuracy, productivity, and the scalability of library protection for the next generation sequencing appreciation cannot be overstated. It will empower our scientists to process larger samples volumes, increasing throughout output and obtain high quality data for various biological studies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and our partners from the USA Aid, the board chairperson from TTRC, 
I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Cyrus through the use of it, TB, TBM project for their continued dedication to public health. They are supporting procuring this, this specialized equipment and their collaboration with ZNI, PHI in training our staff in biophomantics and COVID sample storage are invaluable. Furthermore, USAID TBLRN project recently donated seven handheld blood gas analyzers to the Ministry of Health valued at two million quarter. These instruments have been delivered to the following hospitals. Levi Mwanawasa, United Teaching Hospital, UTH, NTH, that is Indora Teaching Hospital, Kipwe Teaching Hospital, <coughs> Livingston Teaching Hospital, Surrey's General Hospital. Their commitment to improving health outcomes in Zambia is evident. And we are truly fortunate to have them as partners. On behalf of the Ministry of Health and the Zambian government, I assure you, Sahid and Cyrus, that we will take outermost care of this equipment. I'm going to emphasize on that one. Two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, Director Health, I was in Chingola at Nchanga Teaching Hospital, where we received 35 wheelchairs and the operating table from the Rotarians. I emphasize that we will be charging officers that will be misusing the equipment. And I want to bring to attention to the Ndora Teaching Hospital through the senior medical superintendent that if at all this machine will be mismanaged, we are not going to hesitate as the chairman of the disciplinary committee for the Copper Belt province to charge officers that to misuse this equipment. That is the only way that we can show appreciation to the partners is through making sure that we manage this and we continue taking care to this equipment. Money does not come cheaply, neither the donation so painful does people to come in and invest without us contributing anything. Therefore, we must show up show appreciation by taking care of this equipment. We recognize this important and the impact it will have on our healthy system. I can rest assure you, the user that will ensure that we we'll put and make sure we put good measures in the ministry and the Zambian people to look after this equipment. The next time you are going to come, I believe that you are still donating and to donate more. You'll be very happy with what you are going to find in terms of management of the equipment. In conclusion, today marks another milestone in our journey towards a healthy nation. Let us continue to work hand in hand with our partners. Let's embrace them and build health care systems that will leave one, will never leave any person behind. Together we can achieve a vision of Zambia where every citizen can access quality health care services. May all God richly bless you and enjoy the rest of the day and also the use of the equipment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kester Rona, for those remarks. The case of Rona is loudly stated. We need to ensure that we safeguard the equipment. 
so that we see more donations coming through the same piece of equipment from USAID. So thank you so much, Kessel Warner, for those remarks. At this point in time, allow me to invite once again the Kutsara Culture Executive to give us another piece of entertainment. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Lacatra Objective. We can begin another big round of applause, please. Guest of Honor, today's program also has a part where you will be able to tour the laboratory for the TDRC and also test a symbolic cutting of a ribbon on the new piece of equipment that has been donated. We're going to ensure that we finish everything because what we'll do is we'll need to go up up to the sixth floor to ensure that this is done. So we'll finish off everything here, then we proceed going up. At this moment in time, allow me to invite Mr. Kevin Gedekith Siame to give a vote of thanks. Encourage them, please, for their product of Ladies and gentlemen, the PS and uh, head of USAID, and the uh, end use of that fantastic equipment which you have donated to us. Within the past two weeks already, what we've been able to, to do with it has solved a number of uh, issues which were previously was taken at months to identify, and this it covers HIV, uh, drug resistance, tuberculosis, as well as identifying new strains. So I urgently thank you, AID, CIDAS, for being the conduit through which this investment has been done. And uh, just to, would like to echo the, the words of my uh, coach, as well as my director, that we continue to collaborate uh, in this health research, the investment truly will go a very long, long way in terms of Zambia identifying um, and controlling its uh, health problems. Thank you so much once again, and looking forward to continuously working with you. Thank you so much for those remarks. Guess the one is a man of few words. He's ready to go and use the equipment. Reason why he didn't want to take much of your time. Thank you so much. At this moment in time, guest of honor, as I did allude to, we'll be able to finish off everything here so that we tour upstairs. So just to conclude, not really conclude the program, as we'll continue upstairs, I'll just ask that we all stand in a word of prayer. We're not closing, we'll close partially, but we'll continue with the program. May I invite once again, Madam Christie, to give us a word of prayer as we close briefly, then we get into the Zambia National Day. Shall we pray? We thank you, Father, for being with us this morning. We thank you, O oh God, our Father, for everything that has happened at this place. Because, Father, because of your love, you have allowed this to take place. Thank you, O oh God, our Father, for the machine that we have received on behalf of our community. Merciful Father, this will go a long, long way in helping everybody in this country who has issues. Merciful Father, we say thank you to everyone who is here. We pray for them, O oh God, our Father, as everybody travels back wherever they are going. We pray for traveling mercies, O oh God. Give them more wisdom and more strength so that as they wait for your glory, O oh God, our Father, everything shall be well. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, yes, I wanna, uh, Vivian, please, may I now invite you to tour to the RC and obviously to the symbolic ribbon cutting. Say, right now, I have a crisis for Andy. Where do you see the stories from this room? Um, I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, we are still like, the program made and finished. Where they are going to do the machine is very important. Okay. Yes, I don't need this time. Sorry. Okay, maybe. How does, how do I probably have a message? Okay, maybe you can just find it. Okay. <laughs> you can manage the work. But be careful. Don't go to the computer still. Yes. Because of one of them has been good. Okay. Hello? So I can leave this here?
<laughs> Here I am. I found an alternative. No, what? The right one. Oh, the right one is come. The red one. There we go. That's all yours. And then, do we need to? Uh, What's the best angle for this uh, oh, shot? Robin, Robin, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robin, I think that's, that's it. All right, I'll move it. There you go. That's it. <laughs> All right, bro. There we go. 
Thank you, sir. Thanks for your and there's something else there. Oh, that was... Oh. All right, bravo, bravo. Good. So have you ever uh, operated one of these before? Before, um, I've seen one being operated. training or does it take a huge amount? No, it doesn't take, it takes about a day's training and what um, we just before getting this instrument was spending a week just to prepare the samples. And so there was a giving treatment in case of uh, infection status. And with this one, we are able to do the whole library within three hours. Yeah, and so instead of having two minutes, very expensive, yeah. but but the thing is, with this one, there's optimum use of the reagents, which are the actual costly part of it. So, we actually, you actually save money by incorporating this instrument, uh, also, uh, as opposed to having one, one sequence being done per week, we can now do three. Meaning, even in terms of an epidemic outbreak or controlling anything in terms of identification, we're able to respond to the entire. Northern region of uh, of Zen. Sure. Yeah. Ooh. And currently as well, it's not just for the Copper Belt province. Uh, in terms of tuberculosis, uh, with uh, support from your counterpart CDC, they have water rated. So we're now doing all the drug resistance testing for the entire country right here at the Diseases Research Center. And so um, that will go a great, great way in terms of. Uh, uh, complementing, actually spearheading the whole uh, TB, HIV, co-infection in the country. And I think we're going to be uh, a role model for sub-Saharan Africa. So, there is a full system, I think, which, which, which um, I think USAID is part and parcel So, the samples are going to be coming from the two other reference laboratories, UTH and CDL, and then they are brought, they are brought here. So, the, 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 the key thing as well is that um, it is expensive, so you want to get it right on the onset, so that you have got optimum usage of the, of, of, of the maps. Absolutely. You get everything within a day from 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 the Oh yes. So. so
Uh, I didn't check on the court. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Results. Uh, this whole system is connected to a server. It, uh, the whole analysis takes high computing power. So it is a uh, special. So we connect it to a server, and then we do that as on site, and we're able to have results. And the uh, reagents which are uh, uh, bought by USAID are these same ones. Which we are USAID and CDC for the TB CDC with the virus and something else. So, we want to show a bottle of 304 gigabyte RAM and that's the thing for the first one in country. Thanks. And there are other programs as well, as well as the library cap. So it's, it's going to be operational, I think, for a very, very long time. Almost a lot of time. It's going to be a white it's, it's, No, no. In fact, that you have all the TV samples coming that in itself uh, stipulates that they're going to be sequencing almost every week. Yeah, draw a couple of things. So, it's so it's unfortunately most of the analysis is command like human. Yeah. So, this is like a virtual machine, and uh, it works with the efficiency. Everything is done in the sequence. Previously, the preparation of the samples is done using the microwave. And this was taken for the last five days. But now, it's a for the samples. For the samples, it's much as six hours. So, only a person will be considered. Now, they are able to. So if the other machine will be more of the plastic or the other machine, they will also sequence many more samples. But in terms of preparation, this can put their prepare as it has made six samples in a three-hour period, or six hour period. And uh, the importance of this machine is uh, previously. When you have uh, for instance, the way we start with people become more and using genomic sequencing technology, we were able to spare the world, the world system, we were able to identify that this is a new virus and therefore uh, the patient is inside. So, with this, we can even identify uh, the resistance to certain 
So we will have some patients who probably go to the sporting entertainment and wonder why simply because of the sex. And then we have to use this same information. I think uh, a long time ago we were using uh, chloroquine for malaria. Malaria developed resistance. So now we can actually keep up that resistance as uh, within a very short period of time, within a day. If the patient is not responding to malaria treatment, you can use this equipment as uh, genomic sequencing equipment to identify which drugs the malaria can respond to. And within a short period, you can actually have uh, efficient and targeted applications. So it's a very, very important question. About Oh, 